Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to Sona Emergent Biopark in Jurassic World Evolution, a project where we're aiming to build a biologically accurate dinosaur park and preserve with the use of mods. In today's episode we have got quite a fun build, in fact one of my favourite ever builds I think in Jurassic World Evolution. We're going to be building kind of like um, a petting zoo briefly and then we're going to delve into a bit of a bamboo forest kind of vibe. Uh, primarily for a few different dinosaurs from around Asia. In fact, we've got quite a few species here. So if I can remember them off the top of my head, we've got Homolocephaly, which is of course that small Pachycephalosaurid and um, a base game dinosaur, completely unmodded here. We also got Chordipteryx, which was very recently released on the Nexus. And let me just quickly check who that was by. It was Really, really great mod. Um, came with two animals. Yes, it's by Nanolocensis, who of course made many great mods. We also have a Psittacosaurus by Nanolocensis as well. They're going to be part of the Cordipteryx habitat. And those three species, the Homolocephaly, the Psittacosaurus and the Cordipteryx, will be part of the petting zoo. And I'll show you how we do that in a bit. Uh, into the bamboo forest kind of region, we are going to have a Cynoceratops which is a base game dinosaur, but we're going to be using a mod by Zach to replace it with a much, um, I think a bit more of an accurate model and a much, uh, I think a, a more aesthetically pleasing one in some ways. I do really like the base game Cynoceratops. Um, and I really like the colors of it. I like the base game colors a bit more than I like the mods colors, but I prefer the mods model, if that makes sense. And then finally, we are going to be adding in a whole habitat dedicated to quite possibly the best mod that's ever been made for Jurassic World Evolution. My favorite of all of the Theropod mods, and my favorite of all the mods I think, which is of course the Young Chuanosaurus, which we've included before in a previous uh, park build, maybe even two park builds in the past. Really, really fantastic work. It's a great mod by Jagged Fang Designs, one of the all-time greats and really I think one of the, the true heights of the modern community because that dinosaur is just so emblematic of all this like work and effort and love that's been poured into this community to show you know really what people are capable of by some really really skilled like artists and you know coders and stuff like that so it's just really cool to see and very glad to include it. The Psittacosaurus especially I really wanted to include because it is the single most um, accurate dinosaur we have in the game because we have like an almost perfectly preserved Psittacosaurus in real life, the mod author was able to base it off that, you know, nano census, and get even the skin quality to be, I'm um, sorry, the skin colors and stuff like that to be really as close to reality as possible. And that's really, really impressive. Anyways, here on screen, you will have seen me work on this petting zoo area. So the top two sections of this big area here are going to be the two petting zoo habitats. And to kind of create, of course, people can't actually walk through here, but to kind of create that feel that they could, what I've done is essentially uh, run a path through the habitat. And of course, it doesn't clip with the fences anymore. And then from there, I use the Jurassic Park style shelters to kind of create what look like airlocks. And then I'm adding in lots of bamboo. There's already quite a lot of bamboo in this area, and I think it suits the vibe really well. And it just looks like you can go in here, walk through, and you're going to see a lot of really small, really cute dinosaurs. The Cadiptrix is tiny because it was based off the Comsognathus, and it's um, so small, you can barely see it. But really great work from Nano Lucensis. Um, there's another dinosaur in that pack called Sinocalo... Was it Sinocalyoptrix? I am bad at pronouncing that. Is that... Let me think. Sinocalyoptrix? Yes, that's what it's called. And it looks really good as well, but... I wanted to include it in the petting zoo area before I realized it was a carnivore and a predator, so I was like, eh, probably not a great idea, so I'll save it for another area. Maybe I'll put it somewhere nearby. This, of course, is the start of the kind of more Asian section of the zoo. We're going to introduce more Asian species. And then I think we'll try and hopefully round it out with an African section as well, so we have a good um, coverage of all the, the major continents, because we have North and South America already covered for the most part. Uh, we need to cover Asia and Africa now, and then maybe if I can, I'll stick in like a, a bit for Europe somewhere, or just a miscellaneous area. I'm still thinking about whether or not to put Cenozoic animals in the park. I think I would like to, I think it would look quite cool, so I might go with it. 
it's just the Cenozoic animals. Like, there's some really good ones, but then for some of the others, the mods are just not, like, up to the quality that I would like to put them in here. Mainly because, and this, is, this isn't any slight against the mod authors, because they did a fantastic job. It's mainly the limitations of what we have to work with, because whatever creature you put in the game has to line up with the animations and the skeletons provided by the models already here. So you couldn't have a mammoth, for example, without rigging it onto like a pentaceratops or a sauropod, for example. And because of that, the animations are a little bit janky. The models can't be quite as perfect. So that's the only thing that's putting me off, but I might still do it. We'll see how the part goes. Here we are putting together the Yangchuanosaurus habitat. I wanted it to have quite a unique look. So I decided to go for these really like sharp, jagged, rocky kind of ridges that split the split the habitat into these tiny little valleys. And then we're going to have lots of bamboo in here. So it's going to be quite a densely forested habitat. And you'll have the viewing areas kind of curving out in like a C shape at the top. Ends up looking really nice, I think. I like how the, um, the rocks all work together. I just love the shape of it. I think it just looks really unique and it's one of my favorite habitats I've built in the game, I think, which is really appropriate because this is one of my favorite, like, mods and dinosaurs in the game. I remember Yang Chuanosaurus being, like, one of the first dinosaurs I ever learned about as a kid because I had a book full of dinosaurs, like, it was an 80s ad book of dinosaurs. And, of course, right at the end was um, Yang Chuanosaurus because it's, you know, starts with a Y. There was a Z dinosaur, but I cannot remember what on earth it was, because there's not many Z dinosaurs, couldn't remember. And I remember that book so vividly, it was one of my favorite books as a kid, and I used to go through it, and of course, because that was in the late 90s, early 2000s, under Dino Kairos, it just had a big pair of arms, and it was back then when that was still the biggest, like, paleontological mystery. And then, of course, later on, they found more Dino Kairos material. So it was like... I know, it was really nostalgic and thinking about this specific dinosaur, Yang Chuanosaurus, and how it was one of those first that I learned about. So it's it's nice to have it here in the park, and I don't know, it's always been one of those dinosaurs I've had a little bit more of an attachment to. But yeah, the, the habitat turned out really nice, I think, and um, I'm really, again, I'm like I said in the previous episode, I'm really loving the use of natural barriers. So I'm trying to minimize fences, but include lots of rocks and logs and forests and stuff to make it look like, you know, there's barriers where people wouldn't necessarily see them and it gives it a much more naturalistic look and one which I, I really appreciate. I think it looks quite nice. Now I'm just adding in the foliage, some ferns here, and then after that um, we're going to be adding in some fencing. Like I said, trying to keep the fencing quite minimal, just along the path on the around the front, but then around the sides and stuff. I'm going to use the invisible fence and also to block out any areas I just don't want the dinosaurs to walk on. And then, like I said, I think it works all works out pretty okay. In a second, we're going to hop into the game itself and I'm going to show you around what we've done so far, some of the other habitats, talk about some plans and uh, see where we go from here. So I will see you all in just a second. Um, oh wait, hold on. I'm going to stay a little bit longer just because I know I'm going to start including the bamboo. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why this game keeps crashing on me. Because like I mentioned in the previous episode, um, too many bits of like modded foliage, mods in general, are going to start impacting your game. And here, I actually lost 10 minutes of work or so because it did crash and I realized, oh gosh, I need to go back in and prune the mods again a little bit. Got rid of a bunch of extra stuff which I haven't been using, like some coconut trees and a couple other things which I don't necessarily need when I already have like palm trees in the game. So I just pruned the mods a little bit more and now it all works fine. So, you know, fingers crossed that doesn't happen anymore because I'm running out of things to remove from my mod list. So yeah, fingers crossed. Anyways, I'll see you guys in just a second in the game. Okay, so here we are in the game now. And as you can see, just off screen, I made this little control center over here, which is just an auxiliary one from the one over there. Didn't really pay too much attention, just so we can fill out the space quite nicely, and I think it looks pretty alright. Except for a few clipping things here, but this is one of those areas that you're not really meant to see very much, just kind of from a distance, and I think it fills in the space pretty well. There's also another monorail here, I've kind of gone, extended the monorail, though this weird thing exists. Um, I think it's okay, as long as, you know, I imagine, you know, that makes sense in my head, but probably doesn't actually make sense. But you know what? We're not going to think about it too much. Let's have a look at what we've been doing today. 
So here's our Sinoceratops habitat, and I I love it. I think it looks really great. I'm a big fan of these few habitats we've done. Zach Sinoceratops is um, fantastic. This is the alpine skin, I believe. Let's find the base skin, which is my favorite. Yeah, loving these uh, orangey bits. I really like the model. Definitely feels a lot more realistic than the the um, one from the base game, which has like, you know, those holes in the fill, which is fine by me. It's like a solid creative choice. I don't necessarily think it's the most widely accepted for Ceratopsians to have. I don't think that's super like realistic, but that's fine. And I, I do prefer the base game's skins just a little bit more because they are a bit more vibrant. But these ones have some really nice ones as well. Like this red one looks quite cool. It does look a little bit sunburnt, but that's okay. <laughs> but overall, they're really nice to have here. I really like the proportions. Makes them look very unique as Ceratopsians and really, really beautiful. Just going up here now, we have the petting zoo, which I think turned out fantastic. I love using the emergency shelters as kind of an airlock system to enter the petting zoo. And of course we have the incredibly tiny Codiptrix, which are so small. I'm actually not super fond of these pink skin. I accidentally chose it. This is supposed to be the alternative one. I was going to choose just the, um, there's a male skin and a female skin that comes with a mod. Let me see if we can find one of those. There, there we go. Oh, they're very fast as well. Oh no, don't, don't run away from me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so adorable. I love this skin. It's really beautiful. I believe this is the male pattern. Yes. Really, really great work by Nano Census. Nano Census constantly across the um, Jurassic modding scene have really shown themselves to be incredible at doing feathers specifically, and they really do a fantastic job. That Codiptrix is beautiful. Of course, one of those dinosaurs that is far, far closer to avian theropods than non-avian theropods. So, really brilliant stuff there. Cidicosaurus, also by Nano Census, and fantastically done as always. They are very, very cute, super adorable. I love them. They are some of my favorite mods in the game. Really realistic, of course. This is pretty much exactly what we think Sidicosaurus looks like in real life. And I'm very pleased with how they look as they chatter away to each other over there. I really like this um, little pathway too. It just curves really nicely and then it goes to the next one, which is where the homelocephaly are. And of course, these are base game dinosaurs. Some of my favorite base game dinosaurs because we needed small herbivores, we didn't have them. And then the small herbivore pack, I think it was just called the herbivore pack, but you know, it was a small herbivore pack. And we got these guys in there and they are beautiful. And that is the, not the right skin I was going for. I didn't actually want this skin. I think I wanted the green, the green version of this skin, but um, works just fine. And I really like them either way. They're very cute and very tiny. Oh gosh, can we see them eat? Because they have to, they're so tiny that they have to hop onto the feeder to eat, which is the cutest thing. And then of course, guests can exit here. They can make their way down here and look at the sign of Ceratops. And then we get into the Yangchuanosaurus and that habitat I think looks stunning. I'm such a huge fan of how that turned out. The two Yangchuanosaurus look fantastic. Great work by Jagged Fang Designs. This is a base skin, which is my favorite. Just just the detail. The, I cannot say enough good things and I've already said many good things but I can never get over that. One of the most beautiful beautiful animals I've seen in this game. The most beautiful easily. And we have a bit, uh, an alternative skin here just this step which is a bit more red. Not as big a fan of this variant but I'm still very much in love with it either way. And they've got this entire bamboo forest to explore with these really jagged like ridges and cliffs. And of course the bamboo forest itself and this curved viewing gallery. I don't actually know what the view is like. Yeah, not great, <laughs> but you know, it looks cool and that's what matters. So this entire area is mainly the Asia area. Uh, as far as what other animals from the from like prehistoric Asia I'd like to include, maybe like the Omnisaurus and the Sinocalyoptrix, but I don't know where to put them. I could put Sinocalyoptrix here. Um, but Omi source is pretty big, so maybe maybe it could actually occupy the lake. So if you look on the map here, the lake actually has um, an invisible fence in it. So dinosaurs cannot actually walk right into the middle, so it gives the illusion of like that being a deeper area dinosaurs don't access. So this could be like an Omi source habitat. We'll see about that. I don't know whether we'll do that. Down here is the South America area. We've got the Mapusaurus, the Irritator, and then all the herbivores here with the Argentinosaurus. I've added some stuff in the path here, some shops and then um, 
a little cafe as well. It all looks quite nice, but this area is still quite bare. I can see myself doing more stuff there. This whole area is still super empty, so that could be Cretaceous Africa, maybe. I, I still think, like, we have so much space. I really want to do something with, like, Cenozoic animals. But like I said, I just, um, the quality of some of them might not really be up to par. So we'll, we'll see whether I end up doing that. And it's not, again, not against the mod authors at all. They did a fantastic job. It's just the limitations of the game. Here's what we did in the previous episode. And those Torvosaurus are really something else. I did not know how much color, like, variation they had. And look at the blending of that like yellow ochre color into these really nice kind of meridian or blue greenish colors is fantastic and same goes for the other ones like this red just gives them so much personality and uniqueness and still makes them all feel like the same species like cannot say enough good things dragon fan designs always outdoes themselves so great stuff here really like how this area turned out this kind of like debris filled river basin and then leads into where the Stegosaurus are. And I imagine they could smell each other probably. Which, I don't know if it's a bad thing. Like, sometimes they do that in zoos. They let the animals, like, smell each other. Even if they're predator prey. Gives them a bit of, like, enrichment. I don't think they let the prey smell the predators. It's the other way around. But, um, it's good enrichment for the predators at least. For the Stegosaurus, uh, I don't know. I mean, I like to imagine they're not too worried. Considering how they look. You know, these guys are walking tanks as much as the Ankylosaurus are. All the Thyria forums are just, you know, built for defense, so I'm sure they are not worried whatsoever. Beautiful though, I, I love the mod that makes this the plates a lot more defined and sharp. Really, really lovely. But yeah, that's what we did the past couple episodes. In the next few episodes, we will probably fill up this area a bit more. Try to work on some Cretaceous Africa stuff, we'll see how that goes. And then of course we can add in more path work and stuff like that, more monorails. Maybe another hotel area. Maybe we'll have another four or five episodes of this left before we wrap up. And then of course Jurassic World Evolution 2 drops. So non-stop dinosaur content for a while, which is by no means a bad thing for me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought. Please also do give a like on the video if you did like it. Uh, do subscribe for more Jurassic World Evolution content and Jurassic World Evolution 2 content in the not too distant future. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.